I'm Tom Coffeen with Infoblox, uh, where I'm the Chief IPv6 Evangelist. It's a good question. My experience deploying IPv6 at the CDN Limelight, uh, the challenge there for me mainly was the address planning piece, which is part of the reason why I decided to write the book, IPv6 Address Planning. Um, the fact that uh, you get such a large amount of space from the regional internet registries, such as LACNIC here in, in Central and South America, ARIN in North America, RIPE, APNIC, etc. Uh, a slash 32 is the general uh, allocation for a service provider, and since we were operating at Limelight in all of the regions around the globe, uh, we had to get uh, individual slash 32s, not being so certain that we would have uh, out of region announcements honored if we tried to use a single block. So. When you're coming from an IPv4 background and you get your first slash 32 uh, network size, it's kind of confusing as to how to take such a large block and carve it up in a way that makes sense for IPv6. And so I definitely did uh, a few versions of the, the Limelight IPv6 address plan and that was in the inspiration for actually putting the book together. So Infoblox is certified uh, by the USGV6, um, the organization that uh, tests the certification and the interoperability is the Uni University of New Hampshire Interoperability Lab, and they do a really good job of testing all the core protocols at a very deep level. Uh, they're looking very deep into the RFCs for IPv6, uh, for DHCP, and the fact that our, our server is actually DHCP certified, uh, USGV6 certified rather. Uh, and they're, the testing that they do is, is really a way of guaranteeing that, that if you're buying a particular piece of, of gear, that it's supporting IPv6 uh, to the depth of the protocol that's required for it to function properly with other devices and, and to really make your life easier in deploying IPv6. And not having to wonder if, if you have to uh, test everything related to the device being able to support IPv6 from the beginning. So there's really uh, one recommendation, one primary recommendation, and that is to make sure that you get a large enough IPv6 allocation to begin with. Many organizations make the mistake of thinking because the space is so large and because even the smallest allocation in IPv6, a slash 64, is 1.8 times 10 to the 19th addresses, that they can get by with having less address space. But the way that we carve up address space in IPv6 means that you should really start out with enough address space to make sure you have uh, subnets for all your sites and that you're able to deploy those addresses and those blocks based on nibble boundaries uh, rather than uh, single bit boundaries. So the planning's a little bit different uh, but it actually ends up being easier and you actually end up getting a lot more operational uh, flexibility and, uh, and uh, operational ease out of using an IPv6 address plan when it's done right. So.